So, so, so let's get let's get back on track then. Really, now we've got the Oaks, the three-year-old fillies race now, the equivalent of the Derby, but for, for for the fairer sex. And this year, I think really a, a more complicated picture I am yet to see this year than the, than, than the three-year-old fillies. I just can't can't work them out, sir. I don't I don't know what you think. Um, well, probably a bit bit like you and many others. Um, it's a bit of um, a puzzle to solve. Certainly, there's been there's been a number of runners in the last couple of weeks. Lati, Dar, Magical, Sea of Class won't be taking its chance. So, so it's probably um, there's probably more question marks to answer. Really, I mean, um, I've got a horse now called Forever Together, a maiden after three starts. But it's eleven to two. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, obviously, I've looked. Uh, she she was the runner up at Chester, the I'm the Stable Companion Magic Wand. She was. I also see she was third out of eighteen, hammered by seven lengths by that one mm. horse, the late great contingent. Well, in the race before that, the maiden. Yes, um, that's obviously. And then that, it's maiden before that was a double Group Three winner, wasn't it? Who's Steph? As well, so yeah. Yeah, um, as as you say. Um, Funny, funny you mention that because contingent was actually the, one of the horses I was interested in earlier in the year, and obviously, um, it's uh, not with us anymore. But um, yeah, when as soon as you see that form line with um, Forever Together, and you see how far back she was, you just initially think, "Oh, that's not that's not good enough to win an Oaks," and um, I'd probably agree with that. Um, I, two, two horses, two horses that I am. I'm, Two horses that I'm with in this race, not because I think they're super. Yeah, I'm with two now. I'm with two as well, sir. So it'd be interesting to see what we've got. Yeah, there. Um, not not because I think these two horses in any any way or form, but like um, I just feel that like they're breeding um, their the ground conditions on the day. I just think it'll it'll play to their strengths. So um, anyway, the two horses I'm talking about is the th- first one. Is the horse that's called Perfect Clarity? It was the one, the filly that won the Lingfield, the Lingfield trial. Oh, yeah, Nathaniel. So oh, she, she should handle yeah, that. Yeah, she'll I'm like the, um, she'll like the step up in trip. And she was, uh, again, I don't think the Lingfield trial was the strongest, but she did, she couldn't have done much more on the day. I just have a feeling that she will be thereabouts in the race. Um, whether she, whether she's good enough, I'm not sure, but she's about seven to one now. I have actually had a small bet on her. Um, I couldn't disagree with that. I mean, I'm looking. I'm really looking at Nathaniel's on soft ground any day of the week because it's a percussion's family, isn't it? It's a soft ground family. I know it is. You know, look at the other thing they had, Great Heavens. You remember that feeling? Really? It was a boat. It, it only run on. It only run when it was two foot underwater. It is a soft ground family, and I've just not. Um, I would give. Cla- I'm looking at the damn Clarietta now. It's Italian, and the, it's actually they're the listed winner in the pedigree in Italy. Well, it's actually actually an English horse though at first, and then it went to Italy and won. And, uh, and this year, it's trained in Italy now. This year still, by a guy called Riccardo Santini. Have you heard of the bloke? It used to be Prescott's last year. He won a couple of moderate moderate races with it and sold it. Unusual for Prescott, and it's making state like that. And, and it's come out and won a listed race. Yeah, so that's a four-year-old, and so that leaves it a bit short, doesn't it? Really. The dam itself wasn't really, any, wasn't really that impressive on the track. John Dunlop trained it, beaten in seven listed races. So yeah, the best one probably on form was behind Timepiece, third of thirteen at Newmarket in '09. So it's there. It's been there. It's been it's been highly tried in its career. It's had eleven runs, and eight of them were in listed company. So John Dunlop at the time obviously thought he had a good mare on his hands there. So yeah, it's only ever had two runs in its life, I've just noticed as well, sir. So that is exactly the sort of horse that you're looking for in this race, without any shadow of a doubt. I mean, that's one of yours. I mean, I don't know, my first one would probably be, I was strong on it. I would have been strong on it if we did a Guinness preview for this race. So I'll, I'll never get a chance to prove right. I'll be amazed tomorrow with Wild Illusion over eh, there. Because the dam got two miles for the Dolphin Room. I don't know if you remember it, R U M H, that big, the two miler. So I, I noticed there's a bit of support for it. I thought it ran a reasonable race in the Guinness, fourth. I can't be amazed if that doesn't run well. But I would never recommend anyone that sort of said, yeah, go go out tomorrow and get on a Dolphin horse at five to two. 
because of because of, in Charlie Appleby's only at sixty four percent and they're not they're not running nowhere near as well as they, they can do. I mean, I don't know what else you what else you like to look of in that race, but that they're my two would be Wild Illusion yeah, uh, and well, uh, funny uh, enough, um, Wild Second. Um, like, like, like you, I feel it ran. I feel it ran. A, um, I feel it ran a, a decent race in the Guineas without quite threatening enough. Um, but they did say beforehand that the step up in trip is what it needs. I think that was um, on the boo sack, isn't it? On the pre Marcel boo sack. And that is that is the main Phillies race, well, the equivalent of say the racing post trophy for Phillies in France. Well, that is good for them. Wasn't fancied that day, twenty five to one, which probably at the time would indicate to me that they even thought it needed further. Then being a, being out of a two mile dam, it wasn't a great two mile dam. I don't think it ever won a listed race. Rated about eighty odd. It wasn't brilliant, but it shows that the stamina is there in absolute abundance of this horse. And, with you saying, with you saying, having the soft ground as well, he's out of Dubai as well, which is obviously, and a monster was the dam of Wild Illusion. That horse is really could have everything, in only its fourth run, falling in its falling in its favour tomorrow, couldn't it? Um, so yeah, I think um, Wild Illusion certainly a player. I know William Buick. I think at Newmarket and the Guineas he was there for the other for the other good old Finn Philly, but I think his reasoning, main reasoning behind it was. Yeah, I think his main reasoning behind it was the was the trip more than ability of the horse. But obviously, they they do old wild illusion in like in in you know fairly high regard. So, and this has always been her target from before the guineas. So, yes, yeah, she's got a chance. I wouldn't say oh anything certain in that race. It they, it does look an open race, but they're the two I'd, I'd go with anyway. It is a fairly weak race, I'm sure. But I'm, what I'm thinking is that yet again this year we'll have. Same instance of what happens every year. This race, I will always say, is too early in the year. Because the Ribblesdale, the Group 2 at Royal Ascot, is always stronger than this. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you, actually. Funny enough, when I was at the Guineas a few weeks ago, and I, was, I, I just felt like the season hadn't even started. <laughs> and, I, and I was standing there in the Guineas. Um, yeah. Very, yeah, well, very officially now, the Guineas is the start of the flat season, isn't it, now? That's when they start all the championships, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, right. So and then, yeah, what it's do you not think, much... have you got anything to say about have you got anything to say about one well, wary of the time, man? I don't want you to get in any trouble. So I'm, I'm trying to not rush through them but get everything we need. Have you got anything to say about bye bye baby anything? I remember the damn remember when was after so I think that won the Oaks, didn't it? Bye bye baby will appreciate the cut cut in the ground. That's probably one of Aidan O'Brien's horses that will actually handle the, the conditions. I know he's a little bit concerned about conditions for a lot of his horses this um, this week at Epsom. Um, Would you include Magic what, Wand in that as well? Then was Magic Wand the ground concern for you, sir? Um, I'm not sure. I, I do think she'd appreciate better ground um, until they run. Until I actually see the first race being run and see it, you know, kind of how it's right and it's quite it's quite tough because they say it's a chalky track, and even though it's soft, it's not as bad as it you'd think going description is uh, actually to ride so I'm not it's hard to say but I do think Magic Wand obviously Ryan Moore's chose it so I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty I'm 85% sure that he will be on the right horse because very rarely at Epsom is Ryan Moore on the wrong Aidan O'Brien horse um, so yeah I'd say I'd, I'd say it's got a chance um, obviously they do get on the wrong horses from time to time but if you look at Ryan Moore at Epsom on the Aidan O'Brien horses, he very rarely gets on the wrong one. Okay, and um, quickly before we go, um, we've got to touch on the Moussadora. We can't talk about the Oaks without talking about the Premier Yorkshire on Moussadora. We've got give and take the Agus horse. I mean, <laughs> I don't know to be honest. I'd, I'd be surprised at that one. I think on I think on form line on form actual figures. Um, she does have a fair bit to find. However, they've pulled the, the other filly out, see a class that's looked very impressive this season, and they've stuck with the original plan to run this Misadora winner. And she was she did travel well into the race, and she did win well. So, yeah, and I think she's another one that will handle the ground. So, yeah, won't, it's one of those oh, races where... You give her a better chance than me then, sir, it's fair to say. <laughs> I... In this race, 
I wouldn't give nothing no chance if you know what I mean. I think it's a I think it's a really open race. Um, nothing would surprise me what one re- really, but uh, um, no, yeah, I'll give it a, a chance. Frankly, uh, Billy, Edge TR. That's a Simcock horse. We, we touched on Simcock last week. I mean, that was third in the meeting. Or Dar Racino, another one calm now. He's popping up today. I mean, that will like the ground then. You think? Thank you, out of a out of a out of a calm there. There was quite a lot of money for that horse in in the trial at York, and um, I was a little bit disappointed with that one. She is probably one of them that I don't actually fancy in the race. She, don't get me wrong, she did run quite creditable in in the race, um, being placed. But I just think I can't see her reversing the form with the winner of that race. Fair enough, yeah. I mean, that, it's going to have to do that to win, isn't it? Let's be yeah. Honest. So really, what if you were advising anybody really to? Think of looking at the Oaks with a view to maybe trying to guess what the winner would be. You'd have to say really that Wild Illusion and Perfect Clarity would be your which. So which way round would you put them? Which one would you give the best chance to? So? I, I would go. I would go Perfect Clarity. Um, just because one, she hasn't been beaten yet, and two, I know. We, Clive Cox doesn't usually train these kind of type of horses, these classic staying horses. Yeah, he's more of a sprinting type trainer, but he, he seems to, he's pretty confident that the filly's going to run big tomorrow. And um, I, like Mr. I like Mr. Cox. He can train horses for sure, though. Yeah, I'd, I reckon I reckon that'll run a big race tomorrow. I've, I've backed I it each way. I, I can't see why it can't. Yeah, I'd agree with you.